Jimmy Pitaro came on board. Obviously, he made a concerted effort for us not to get into politics per se. Not to get into politics per se. We are BG. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. Brittany Griner. Roe versus Wade. I thought there was a time there where that was almost being promoted. We did get to a point over the years at ESPN where it was too much polit politics. It was the politiz politicization of too many different things. ESPN being too political? Who would have guessed? I'm going to show you guys clips of ESPN's cringiest moments, including virtue signaling over political and social issues. Let's get started. You, you and Mike Tomlin are two of the few black head coaches in the league. I wonder what your relationship is like with them and your thoughts on Steve Wilkes joining that fold. I have a very good relationship with Tomlin. Uh, we don't look at what color we are when we coast against each other. We just know each other. I have a lot of very good white friends that coach in this league as well. But you also understand that representation matters too, right? And that when young aspiring coaches or even football players, they see someone that looks like them, they grew up like them, that has to be something. Well, when you say you see you guys and look like them and grow up like them, it means that we're eyeballs to begin with. And I think the minute you guys start, stop making a big deal about it, everybody else will as well. Right off the bat, the cringe is almost unbearable we have ESPN reporters trying to tell Todd Bowles how he should feel about the color of his skin and diversity. But we're just getting started, my friends. It only gets worse from here. Draymond Green, who has been the subject of controversy after his Twitter thread, he blamed women for making quote unquote complaints oh, rather than taking action over disparities in pay and investment in women's sports. Those comments drew the attention from the soccer world where U.S. women's national team star Megan Rapino said that Draymond quote, showed his whole ass in not even understanding the struggles of equal pay for women and that it was unfortunate mm. that an athlete in Green's position didn't have a more informed opinion. The problem here, George, is that we're sitting up here talking about Megan Rapino versus Draymond Green, and that's taking away from what we should be talking about, which is equal pay. It is not on the oppressed to fix oppression. It has to be done with allyship, which is where someone like Draymond Green, a man, comes into a space that affects predominantly women. But the thing about being an ally is when you come into that space, you should be listening first, not talking first, because there is no one who understands better what these women are going through than these women. Oh, this is so nauseating. So Draymond Green isn't allowed to have an opinion because he's a man, but he also should be held responsible for helping women's sports because he's a man? Can someone help me with this? When I first heard the early accusations, I'll admit I didn't believe it. I've known Deshaun Watson since his freshman year at Clemson, hugged his mom, interviewed him many times, and considered him a friend. I've only personally experienced him as kind, humble, and loving. And if I kept a list of players least likely to do something terrible, he would have been at the top. But as is always the case, those genuine feelings are judicially irrelevant because I have absolutely no clue what this man has done in private. I don't know how he treats women when no one else is around and none of us do. Sam Ponder just admitted she had no idea what Deshaun Watson does in private or whether or not he's guilty, but she's gonna assume he's guilty anyway and cry about it on national television because there's nothing that pays like being a victim. This is why people are tired of watching your program. If he wasn't guilty in a court of law, it's not our job to decide whether or not he's guilty. And it's definitely not yours either. Your job is to cover sports and ours is to watch sports. As you can see, ESPN never gets political even when they stop doing their job because legislation went through that they don't agree with. Take a look. Happening in Florida and across other states as well that are targeting our LGBTQI plus communities. Many of our colleagues here at ESPN have planned and organized a walkout that will be happening at 3 p.m. Eastern today. And to be honest with you, we thought we were going to come here today and really celebrate a sport that has meant so much and done so much, including for so many in the LGBTQIA plus communities. But we understand the gravity of this legislation and also how it is affecting so many families across this country. And because of that, our allyship is going to take a front seat. And with that, we're going to pause in solidarity. The final clip that I'm going to show you guys is ESPN reporter Nick Friedle and many others in the media going on a manhunt for Kyrie Irving, asking him the same questions over and over again in a press conference 
waiting for him to slip up. This is one of the worst ones you'll see. Are you sorry for the hurt that your post caused people? I take my responsibility for posting that. Some things that were questionable in there, untrue. Like I said in the first time you guys asked me when I was sitting on that stage, I don't believe everything that everybody posts. It's a documentary. So Kyrie the the documentary listed among falsehoods. It said the Holocaust didn't happen. Did you Again, believe the Holocaust? Those falsehoods happened? are unfortunate. And it's not that I don't believe in the Holocaust. I never said that. Never ever have said it. It's not come out of my mouth. I never tweeted it. I never liked anything like it. Kyrie, for the record, do you have any anti-Semitic beliefs? Again, I'm going to repeat. I don't know how the label becomes justified because you guys ask me the same questions over and over again, but this is not going to turn into a spin around cycle of questions upon questions. I told you guys how I felt. I respect all walks of life and embrace all walks of life. That's where I sit. I think what people want to hear though is just a yes or no on that question. Yes or no. I, I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. So there you have it. Now I want to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. Is ESPN too political? And don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more content just like this. And I will see you in the next upload.